Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on CRN. And now, live from New York City via Los Angeles, California, it's time for The View from over here with the man who has a view for all seasons, your host, Stan Weisleder. Let's hear your views. My views? Wow. Okay, this is Stan Weisleder on The View from over here in the studio with Malcolm Barry Berman. Very good. In downtown glamorous Sunland, California. You've all heard about water shortages taking place in California, and now there's one in Iran. Well, I have a shortage for you. Venezuela. You've heard of Venezuela, the country? They're in the midst of a serious, very serious shortage of breast implants. Last year, Venezuelan physicians were able to uh, to perform only 85,000 breast implant procedures. Their doctors complain that the best implants come from the U.S., but regulations on monetary exchanges are preventing the female population of Venezuela from getting their boob jobs. Well, that's very big in Venezuela because yeah, I don't know if you know it or not, but a lot of the Miss Universe. Well, all of uh, South are, America. They, they, in fact, the government provides that and and those jobs. Well, the, as I say, in Venezuela, the uh, a lot of the uh, the beauty contestants they have boob jobs they take out their rib because then they have a narrow uh a waistline they uh they do nose jobs they do eye jobs they do everything they do ear jobs so they make their own barbie dolls they make their own barbie dolls and they've been very successful at it well very good all right we have another news item this comes from overseas you've all heard maybe you've heard maybe you haven't that size matters or does it Anyway, in Germany, a man was accused of exposing himself. Then the man's wife testified under oath that her husband's organ was much too short to hang out of his pants as claimed by the woman who says that she was flashed. The presiding judge said, we will get to the bottom of this, and he ordered the local health officials to measure the evidence before he renders his verdict. Uh, but my question is, is the evidence, uh, w- will it be while it's er- at its erect status or whether it be non erect? Why don't you send him an email and ask him? <laughs> because I, 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 I have spoken to various women during my life, and it seems that the, the size of the male organ uh, changes a lot. Uh, do, 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 <laughs> well, you don't seem to like this discussion. <laughs> for some people. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, uh, if you're out there, if you're a woman or if you're a man, if you have any comments on this, you know, please email us. It's uh, malcolm at viewfromoverhere.com it's or stan it's, at viewfromoverhere.com. Send it to Malcolm. And, uh, let us know your opinion because uh, over many years, I think uh, size does count. Malcolm, when you're talking on the radio or TV, whatever, you should remember to say, uh, uh, uh? less. Okay? Go right into the word or the sentence no, um, without hesitating with, uh. uh and in this topic, I do, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I've noticed. All right, let's get down to something more serious. The countries that make up the Mideast, as I see it, together with their arbitrarily drawn borders, were born after World War I, mostly out of convenience for the victors, rather than on truly ethnic or religious lines. As of late, the world and the U.S. has discovered that these ethnic and religious differences are more profound than anyone ever gave them credit for. Added to this dilemma is that the Muslims, or at least some of them, are still fighting the Crusades of a thousand years ago. Added to this mix, or quagmire, is the fanatical hatred of the Muslims, most of them that is, towards the Jews who did in fact occupy the land they now reside in some 2,000 years ago. 
And even after ISIS is beaten, and they surely will be, the underlying problems will not go away. And while this gigantic smokescreen is obscuring everything else, Iran will finally be able to complete its production of fissionable material and voila. Right. Well, going back to what you were talking about at the beginning of the show, Iran is now asking the people to pray for water because they have a, a shortage there worse than ours in California. I thought they're praying for plutonium. No, the. <laughs> but that. But it, how can you bomb one area or do do a nuclear bomb in one of the areas without contaminating your own country? I mean, uh, if if, if uh, Iran Depends does a nuclear which bomb, way in the Israel, wind is blowing, and the wind blows all maybe when they ways. get it, they'll test it in Israel. Who knows? But they'll kill everybody. It's, it's not only. Uh, you know, the Israelis will kill the entire Middle East. Well, will depends be a nuclear which way waste. the wind is blowing. Or they could dig a big hole and do it underground like they do uh, in Nevada, the underground test site. Well, I, I think they should ask Allah to uh, uh, do their bidding for them. So he, he can kill every, all the Israelis without... Um, well, I think we're having too much killing all around. All It's just too much. It's got to come to an end. It has to stop. At yeah, some when point. we're all dead. Uh, a lot will be okay. will become like the dinosaurs, right, Paul? Yeah, and then some alien spaceship will come here many years later and dig up the remains of the civilizations that once existed. Well, a lot of people say that the uh, the aliens came way before, and they show evidence of it. Maybe they did. Maybe we are related to aliens. Who knows? We could do some DNA testing. But what do you compare it with? Uh, I don't know. We compare it to some of the fossils that uh, we dig up. Well, the they fossils, do that constantly. The they have DNA, don't they? The bones? Yeah, they scrape but the bones. If, if we share DNA with fossils, that just means we and the fossils came from Earth. There's nothing to compare it with an alien being. I, I will take that up with my scientific friends, and we will come to a conclusion. Yeah, you got to do that. Listen, uh, I want to talk. We have a... A very special guest on today, and uh, Paul. Paul, he's trying to get them now. He's trying to get him now. Okay, while he's trying to get him, let me tell you who he is. Most of you have heard of him, and some of you haven't. Okay, and his name is Edwin Washington Edwards, Governor Edwin Washington Edwards. He is a man who needs no introduction. If he should ever change his middle name, I can think of only one suitable replacement, and that is controversy. Why would you say it's controversial? Just because He's been in and out of it his entire political life. And to summarize, he is a man who says what he means and means what he says. Well, listen, a, a brief background. I think he just celebrated his uh, 87th birthday. 87, yeah, just yeah. shortly. Uh, I think it was in August. Yeah. And, and he's been uh, governor for four terms. Four ter four not, separate terms. Not all not, consecutive, not consecutively. But four terms, governor of Louisiana. And he's running now for Congress. And uh, he, again, but the controversy was he was uh, convicted of uh, uh, not laundering money, but, but accepting bribes. Well, he says he's innocent, and I tend to believe him. No, I tend to believe him also, but he was convicted, and he had been serving time at the federal prison and just released, I think, in uh, 2011. And, and uh, he got married. He but got anyway, ma uh, we I believe we have him ready. Governor, are you with us? Speaking. Okay, great. So my first question to you is, how are you and your family doing? Doing fine. I'm in good health. Uh, 87 years old. I have a 14-month-old baby who's in good health. My beautiful 36-year-old wife is doing well. The campaign's going good. I've been blessed. I have a question for you, Governor. This is Malcolm Berman. 
why? I mean, after all this time and what you've been through and all your years, uh, you know, in public service as governor and congressman, why do you want to go back to Congress? Because I feel like I have something to offer, and I think the country needs people such as I who have an understanding of the workings of government and who is willing to make principal compromise in order to make things happen. Uh, I'm very concerned about the stalemate and gridlock in Washington. Nothing is happening, and I think I have experience dealing with uh, conflicting opinions in people, and I can make things happen by principal compromise, and it's my life's work. I mean, just like old farmers and old doctors and old radio people don't want to quit simply because they uh, get old, uh, it's what I like to do, and I have the support of my family and and many friends, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve. I, well, I have a role to fill. I have a question for you, Governor, okay? With the exception of your young son, does your family agree with your decision to run for office? My family on political affairs affairs has always taken the position that I was the candidate, I knew what I was doing, and my record of success proves that, and they have always supported whatever decisions I made about the campaign or my desire to participate in one. However, they didn't have that attitude about everything, but politically, in campaign, they figured that they should defer to my opinion, and while they offer theirs, they're always willing to accept whatever decisions I make. Well, you're a Democrat running now in a predominantly Republican district. What do you think your chances are? Well, it's not a Republican district. Uh, the registration is equal, 47-47, but it is a conservative district, no question about that. However, I'm conservative, I'm liberal on, on social issues, because I think government should get out of people's lives and let people uh, live as they want to live, as long as they don't hurt anybody else. But I, in the years that I served as governor, the budget was always in balance. We paid school teachers, bus drivers, and lunchroom workers. People were working. We, we we had a balanced budget, and I made the I made the uh, affairs of the state run well. Uh, I'm a conservative person in so far as running the fiscal affairs, not only of my family but of my government. Do you think that you could be effective? Let's say if elected in this uh, the House right now, which is controlled by Republicans. Oh, let me be honest. I don't expect to go up to Washington and change it overnight, nor to move it to any great length. But I do think that there's a different attitude coming now in the country. People are getting fed up with the Republican and the Democratic leadership. They want somebody who can make things happen, and I'm the guy. Well, okay. Now, uh, if you win, okay, assuming you win, do you think you'll do as well as when you clobbered David Duke? I'm, so, I'm sorry? Well, if you win, do you think you'll do as well as when you clobbered David Duke? Well, no, not in this district. I expect to win, but uh, by a narrow, narrow ma- majority, because it's a very conservative district, and I, I have the problem of my uh, incarceration, which haunts me, even though it's unfair. Nevertheless, I have to live with it. And I, I expect to win, but I do not see any landslide. Okay, G- Governor, if you if you hold on for a yeah. minute, I hear the, I hear our music. That uh, hold on, and we have to uh, break away for a few commercials. And hold on, and we'll be right back with you. You're listening to the View from Over Here, heard on CRNTalk.com. You can hear us on www.viewfromoverhere.com. And you could email us at stan uh, viewfromoverhere.com or malcolm uh, uh, viewfromoverhere.com. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Trees, an epic novel by Stan Weisleder, told in the Godfather fashion, with two-thirds of the book taking place in Las Vegas and describing the transition from the mob to Howard Hughes to corporate America. 
This book is Las Vegas. Jim Santangelo from the International Brotherhood of Teamsters said, I didn't grow up in New York or Las Vegas. I grew up in Jersey City, but I know everyone in this book. I loved it. Hal Rothbart, publisher, says, I wish I had written it. The Trees by Stan Weisleder. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now, before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-881-1672. 800-881-1672. 800-881-1672. Call right now. 800-881-1672. This is Primetime Focus. I'm Aileen Ellis. In the U.S., credit card fraud is a huge problem. AARP financial educator John Dolphine. More than two people in every five experience some kind of credit card fraud within the last five years. The chip and pin credit card system used by other developed countries is a lot more secure. But making these cards is expensive, so now the government is giving companies a push. And one of the ways they're getting retailers to adopt this is they are putting the burden on the retailer. If a retailer doesn't adopt the new chip and pin technology, by 2015, they will start becoming responsible for fraudulent transactions made in their stores. Right now, responsibility is with the credit card company. So far, a few companies have made the switch. In fact, American Express and Citibank have already been sending out these cards to their customers. That's Primetime Focus, brought to you by AARP. Hear all our programs on the web at aarp.org slash radio. A Killer of Lions by Stan Weisleder. There were four squadrons of black fighter pilots during World War II that had to fight two air forces in order to gain recognition, the Luftwaffe and the U.S. Army Air Corps. The HBO special and the recent attempt at a full-length feature film do not come close to the full and true story of these brave men. They were not ball players. They were not rap singers. They were fighter pilots and American heroes in the truest sense. A Killer of Lions by Stan Weisleder. Okay, we are back on The View from Over Here. This is Stan Weisleder in the studio with Malcolm Barry Berman. And we have as our special guest for the week, Governor Edwin Washington Edwards. Governor, I understand that you are uh, moving on to something else right now, and your time is kind of limited. So let's get to some of the more direct questions. Is that okay with you? Go ahead. All right. Do you care to comment on what a lot of Americans have been thinking as of late, which is the seemingly lack of decisiveness and altering of posture on the part of our president in dealing with the situation in the Mideast, or do you think he has it all under control? Let me be honest with you. I'm in Louisiana. I've never been to the Mideast. I don't know what's happening there, and it would be unfair of me to second-guess what he's doing because I assume that he's got first-rate intelligence. The only thing I'll say is that we need to do something. Our Iris needs to be stopped where they are and not allowed to expand any further. We need to make sure that Iran does not develop nuclear weapons. And all I can say with my limited knowledge, and I acknowledge that, is we need to put our foot down and make a decision of where we stand and how far we're going to let them go. Well, would you, would you uh, consider troops on the ground or boots on the ground? In finding those terrorists, in my opinion, Everything is on the table. We need to do whatever we need to do to stop them, because if we don't, some 41 different groups of terrorists are dedicated to destroying our way of life and destroying us, not Islam now, I mean, not, not 
Muslims necessarily or people who of the Islam religion, but crazy people who are happen to be in that religion. But whoever they are, whatever they are, and whatever religion they are, they need to be stopped before they come over here and kill more Americans. Now, now, a lot of people say that uh, you're running for the Congress would be a, a stepping stone for you getting back into the governor's seat. Is there any truth to that? No, uh, none at all. I would have run for governor had I been permitted to do so, but I'm barred by the state statute. So I'm doing what uh, I can do. There's a vacancy here in the congressional seat, and I'm going to make an effort to serve people in this area in Congress. But just uh, to follow up on that, there was also questions whether you would uh, uh, challenge that law because that would be retroactive, because I understand the law was enforced while you were incarcerated. I thought about it when I first got out, and I'm of the legal opinion, although I'm not that good of a lawyer. I was a lawyer for many years, but I'm of the legal opinion they would not apply to me because it was passed and implemented after I was sentenced and after I was in prison. And it would be retroactive in a punitive way, which is prohibited by federal and state constitutions. But I determined not to do that because I didn't want to engage in the fight. I have a question for you, another question. If you are elected, what would be your position on immigration, for one thing? First of all, secure the border. Everybody agrees on that. I'm not prepared to tell you how to do it, but we have Army and Navy, Air Force, National Guard, and state uh, police, all of whom could be used for that purpose, whatever it takes. Second, as far as the children that are here, I think we ought to offer them for adoption. Many of them have siblings or parents or relatives that would be willing to adopt them, educate them, give them a good home, and make useful citizens out of them. But those that can't be adopted or will not be adopted, we need to return to their native country. And we need to do that at their expense. How? We have foreign aid to all those countries that are sending those children here. We just take it out of what we owe them when we start with them at the end of the year. Good idea. <laughs> do you have it's any It's not our responsibility to pay for that. That's true. Governor, do you have any ideas or comments regarding the profits of the oil companies? In other words, reducing their profits and passing it on to the consumer. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Well, everybody says that the oil companies are earning too much. They post quarterly profits in the billions. What do you think about cutting back on their profits and passing it on to the consumer? Well, that's certainly a consideration. You know, when I became governor in 1971, oil was selling for $8 a barrel. Now, admittedly, there's been a great deal of inflation and escalation in cost of, produce, of producing. In those days, oil could be found at narrow depths and, and on safe, dry land. Now most of the production comes from in the deep waters or from uh, I, areas I, I, that... Yeah, excuse me, Governor. I, I hate to cut you off, and I know you have to run. It's that music again. It's, Governor, can you be with us about another few minutes after this commercial break? No, I'm sorry. They're calling me now to... <laughs> Okay, well, then you'll you'll have to come back. We'll we'll give you a buzz give and reschedule you. And call me back. Okay, thank you very much. The next time you're in Southern California, visit the Riviera Restaurant in Calabasas. Riviera, as the name implies, is the ultimate in Calabasas restaurants. There's not even a close second. And what's better suited for the Beverly Hills of the Valley than a Beverly Hills type of restaurant and watering hole without those ridiculous Beverly Hills prices? They're so good. With impeccable service, they probably don't even need this commercial. Even now, it's hard to get a good table except for off hours. But if you really want to treat yourself or your date, call 818-224-2163. That's 818-224-2163. That's the Riviera Restaurant in Calabasas, California. California. Have you ever considered adding a home security system but thought it would be too expensive? Here's the good news. There's never been a more affordable time to help protect your home, valuables, and your loved ones. You can now get a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, with the installation of a new ADT-monitored system. Here's even better news. Your new system, worth $850, is free. You pay just a $99 installation charge and purchase monthly monitoring for less than $2 a day. Call Protect Your Home today at one 877 
1-866-669-8954. That's 1-866-669-8954. Get the peace of mind that comes with owning an ADT monitored system plus a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home. Call now, 1-866-669-8954. That's 1-866-669-8954. 36-month monitoring contract required. General terms and conditions apply. Visit protectyourhome.com forward slash terms. As a small business owner, there's one word that you absolutely dread, payroll. For small businesses, it's a big burden. You may think you're saving time and money doing it yourself, but come on, are you? Timesheets, processing checks, calculating taxes, a total waste of your time. Paychecks simplifies payroll processing, saving you time and money. Submit your payroll online, fax it in, or call your dedicated Paychecks payroll specialist, and you're done. Learn more at trypaychecks.com. Come on, do the math. The IRS dishes out 8 million penalties a year. Make one mistake and you're on the hook. On average, you're losing nearly one business day every month doing payroll. That's time and money you'll never get back, unless you get paychecks. More than half a million small businesses already do. Call 888-578-5378. Trade payroll pressure for peace of mind. Call now. 888-578-5378. That's 888-578-5378. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Every day is Save the Earth Day, and each of us has a part to play. For more information and how you can do your part to save the Earth, contact us at savetheworld.net. That's savetheworld.net. That's your cue, Stan. Oh boy, my cue again. Okay, this is Stan Weisleder on The View From Over Here, and I am in the studio with Malcolm Barry Berman, and we just had as our special guest for the week... For the beginning of the show. We Well, I said we just had oh, for right, okay. our special guest of the week, ex-governor... Edwin Edwards, or Edwin Washington Edwards. His uh, little name there is U, E-W-U. That's how his uh, people, some people refer to him, U. Yeah, r- running for Congress at the age of 87. 87. He has a brand new wife at age, what did he say, 36? Yeah, she was born, I think, in 1978, it said. Yeah, and so his kids are a, older. He has a son less than two years old. I, I wanted to talk to him about that, but we didn't have a chance. He had to run. <laughs> we'll, we'll have him back on the show. Yeah, and uh, but, he was very interesting. I like the way he talks about things. Anyway, we have another guest on. Paul, how are we doing? He's ready. He's P- ready. Peter, okay. are you there? Yes, sir. All right. We have also as our guest today, Peter Lemongello. Okay, he is a uh, singer. And I remember him very well from years ago, and he's been a little, uh, well, Peter, why don't you tell us about what you've been doing as of late? Well, actually, uh, in the last year, I've been writing uh, information that's going to lead to a documentary, 
And the reason for that is because there's uh, been some interest in uh, doing a documentary based on the fact that what I did was considered the first infomercial. And what I did is uh, go on TV and sell an album in 1976, and we had enormous success because we sold over a million albums. Yeah, are you on a cell phone? No. Oh, we seem to have a little trouble yeah. with this connection, but hope our listeners can get through it. Yeah. Uh, now, when so you're doing now, you're getting ready to do this documentary, or you're writing up something that would be made into a documentary. Do you have there's backers company, for this? Well, there's a company in California that approached me, um, the man who, uh, who wrote the movie or screenplay, excuse me, uh, for Coming to America. I thought it was a funny movie. Barry Blaustein. Yeah. He's the one that is uh, procuring or producing the documentary. Yeah. Well, well, Peter, in other words, I have you to blame for all these infomercials on the air promoting music. That's, <laughs> uh, yeah, I have cable TV, and if it's late at night, that's all I hear. It's very possible that I'm the culprit. And the reason is, prior to my commercial, and, and even now in most cases, when you see a, a record album or a record offer of any kind, whether it's from Time Life or whoever it is, they are constantly doing what they call a crawl, meaning they're running song titles in front of your eyes, up the screen, from bottom to top. And when I was filming my commercial, the guy filming it said to me, okay, give me the song titles so we can create this uh, crawl. I said, well, I don't want one. He said... Uh, what do you mean everybody has one? I said, well, you don't understand. I'm unknown at this point, and so are my records, so are my songs. So why would I give up uh, having my face on the screen, have it blocked by unknown song titles? I said, are you going to run unknown song titles in front of an unknown face? I only have two minutes on the air. I think I want to use all of them to try to sell myself. So that's how it happened. Being I was uh, paying for the commercial... Uh, I had the right to do that, and it ended up being the first music video. Fantastic. And yeah. that was back in 76? Yes, sir. Where in Florida do you live now? Boca Raton. Boca, okay. Are, 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 are you still producing records or music or singing? Or? Well, I still perform in Atlantic City. I perform in uh, uh, various places here in Florida and, uh, and other states, but... Uh, Mostly casino work and uh, condominium work at this point. Uh, did you do you have a, a website where uh, people can go in and find out where you'll be appearing? Yes, it's P Lemon Jello, meaning my first initial P, then L E M O N G E L L O dot com. And that will have a list of all the uh, you're performing. Will, will you be in Los Angeles it has at all? Everything, Mike. It has my Tonight Show appearances. Everything you can think of has. Who did you appear with in the Tonight Show? Was that Johnny, Johnny Carson? Well, yes, uh, and Don Rickles when he was the host, and uh -huh. Bob Newhart. When I was on it 25 times over the years. Wow, it's a, it's a lot uh, of exposure. I was on. I was on with Joey Bishop. All the all the big comics who hosted the show actually. Well, that's very good. That's terrific. Now, uh, tell me, in what you're doing now, you mentioned that you're doing the condos. That is that the condo circuit in Florida? Yes. Okay. Which is a very big uh, venue. And yeah, I know. Uh, usually I'm down there in uh, March, and I try to see as many as possible. A lot of people don't realize technically the Catskills moved here. Uh, yes, right. that was be, that was going to be my next statement. <laughs> well, well, one of our guests and Stan's friends is, uh, what's his name? Howie Rapp. Howie Rapp. Oh, I was with him just the other day at uh, their, uh, their annual, um, what, was, what was it? It wasn't Russia. New Year's. Is that Russia? Rosh Hashanah, yeah. Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, pretty good for a Catholic kid, right? To remember that. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> if we go back far enough, we're all the same. Of course we are, yes. And especially uh, Catholics and Jews, we are all the same. Well, it's the, the same difference. thing. I, I, I had a good friend growing up. I'm Jewish and was Italian. Same family. The, the, mother, oh, yeah. the mother says, wait till your father comes home. And the father <laughs> comes home and he says, what do you want me to do? You know, I'm tired. I work the whole day. <laughs> Anything they say about 
Jewish mothers, you can easily yeah. relate to Italian mothers. Right? Yeah, and then, and then the Italian mothers say, uh, manja, manja, eat, eat. The Jewish mothers say, es man kind, eat. Everything is based on food. <laughs> Very good. I like that. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm sorry, you asked uh, me uh, Peter, do you also do the uh, cruise lines? You know, I did uh, years ago, quite a few of them. But to be honest with you, I don't enjoy it. So I haven't done it in many years. Why, why is that? Well, because, uh, to tell you the truth, when you're a performer on a ship and you're the headliner, you have nothing to do but your show. And that's only once a week. So if you're on, on the ship for six or seven days, it's pretty uh, hard to keep busy. Are, 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 are you a single man or a married man now? Married. Married, okay, so that, that leaves out half of the activities you can well, do you can on Well, you take shipboard. your wife with you and make it a vacation for the other six days. I did, and what ended up happening is we ended up having a baby. <laughs> well, I, I know what you did during the break time. I mean, let's face it, you can eat ten times a day on a ship if you're fast enough. <laughs> but so even you, that gets old. You, you gamble, eat, and make babies. <laughs> Well, that, that's just not a bad deal. Gambling on a ship isn't real gambling, at least not in Vegas terms. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And uh, uh, if you're if you're uh, appearing on the ship, part of the uh, uh, staff, I guess you'd call it, you're not allowed to gamble. No. Yeah, that's right. You because can't. I guess they figure you get too friendly with the people that uh, work in the casino, and there would be uh, a chance of them being taken well, yeah, well, I, I, and, and should you win you don't want to take away their all of their profits i, I think this is a, yeah, this is a total different philosophy than than vegas i remember vegas they, they wanted the actors to uh or the Mingle. top billing they, well, no, they wanted them to gamble because then they could lose back the money that they paid them well, no. vegas and atlantic city totally different they want you they definitely right. uh uh, encourage gambling. Yeah, they want the people to see the performers gambling, so they'll want to elbow next to them and lose money as well. My friend Vic Damone told me that he once worked Vegas for six months and didn't get paid. He left it all at the table. Well, yeah, he had gambled so much. They gave him about 3000 a week to live on, but the rest of what he earned they took to pay off the gambling debts. Yeah, well, I hear they pay you all the absorbent money, especially to, to I remember... We're going back a while to Sinatra and, and Sammy Davis. Times have changed, Because Malcolm. they brought the heavy rollers in. Oh, they did. Um, uh, by comparison, for example, um, Frank Sinatra drew spenders that actually uh, transformed the whole hotel as far as earnings. People that parked cars who normally made 800 a week made 4000 a week when he was there. <laughs> it's really true. So uh, uh, some entertainers... Brought big spenders and some filled the place like Elvis Presley, but didn't bring spenders, didn't it's, bring gamblers. Peter, tell me, do you have any gigs coming up in L.A. or Las Vegas or New York? No, no we're, we're uh, headed for Atlantic City um, for March and April. I have about eight weeks there. Now, um, there have been but, some articles in the papers about Atlantic City having some troubles, including Trump and laying yes. off a lot of people. Is that true? Yes. Um, I know that uh, one of the hotels I used to work at, the Hilton, changed its name to the Atlantic Club, and they closed. Trump Plaza closed. Uh, the Showboat, another place I worked at many times, and the Revel have already closed this year. Well, what do you so think four, uh, the problem is? Four of is? them have closed, and I think Taj Mahal is supposed to close next month. Well, what do you think the problem, the problem is? Really is? Simple. It's, it's really simple. They can't support, there's too much competition to support 11 or 12 hotels any, anymore. Years ago... They were the only game in town, so of course they flourished. But today, uh, people can go to Philadelphia, you can go to New York, they could go to uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, and or, just think, yeah. if you were part Indian, you could set up your own casino. Oh, I tell you, I would. If I had it all to do over again, rather than be of Italian descent, I, I would like to be Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> but not, but not a hundred years ago. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to fight the cavalry, but, I mean, I'd like to be in on the casino, actually. Well, well I hate to tell you, I think in Las Vegas, originally, if you were Italian, you were in the casino act. <laughs> I won't go into that now. Yes, I know. I can't talk about that either. Where are you originally from? I'm from Jersey City, New Jersey. Oh, jo oh Jersey. Right. Yeah. Jersey. Uh, so it's like New York, same thing. Oh, it is. It's, uh, you know, when we were kids, when we got to be a little bit older, we were able to 
very little money, jump on what they called the tubes, which was a, a, a subway from Journal Square. Uh, I know the Jersey tubes. City. Yeah, from Journal Square in Jersey City right to Manhattan. Yeah, because that's it, because... It took, yeah. it took about three or four minutes. It was, all you did is go under the Hudson River. Yeah. Yeah, that's because in, in, in Jersey, you had to be 21 to drink. In New York at that time, was 18. 18, exactly. So, uh, that's so, why it was so popular to go right. to New York. <laughs> yeah, but uh, at 18, they could draft you and you could get killed. Well, I had that problem, too. I was drafted in 1966 and ended up going to Vietnam. For I did, yeah. So did you see action so, there? Yes, I did. And then... And, uh, uh, did you feel that changed you a lot when you, when you came back home? Because a lot of people had a hard time adjusting. Well, uh, it's difficult for many reasons. One of them is that uh, you carry a lot of it back with you as far as nightmares and fear. of uh, Every time you go to sleep, you think you, you're being sent back there. And that was difficult to adjust to. But also that uh, we were mistreated when we came back. Uh, we weren't expecting a parade, but we certainly weren't expecting to be spit on. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, so tell me, that. when you were in Vietnam, what unit were you with? I was with a, a first logistical command in Saigon, and uh, and then we traveled all over the country. So I was in as far south as Canto and as far north as Da Nang, and uh, play coup. And all right, so you didn't North. sing to entertain the troops. I did for two months. The other eight months, I was. Not able to. Do, you could only do it for two months. And what they did when we uh, traveled as a as a as a entertainment unit is they sent us to the places the USO couldn't go to. Ah. Because we could go to the unsecure places, and the USO could only go to the most secure places they had. So, uh, in order to give entertainment to the troops that were in the worst possible areas, they sent soldiers to do it. Mm. And I was one of them. Now, 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 back to the entertainment business. So, what is it? What would you say is the biggest change from when change in marketing or, or singing since from when you started till now? Well, okay. Uh, let me answer the marketing part of that question first. When I did it, there were only there was no cable TV in 1976. So when I did it, there were only six stations to cover, and it was pretty easy to blanket uh, the New York market and then California and, and Vegas, you know, LA and Vegas. Uh, because there were so few state, there were so few stations. Today, with hundreds of stations and people taping things and fast forwarding through commercials, I don't know how it could be done. I don't know, you would never make the impact that I made. Uh, uh, I covered. Uh, we started. Me, our, our plan was a demographic group from 24 to 54 female, but we really caught everybody from little children to old men and uh, uh, grandmothers uh, to. Very young uh, teenagers, so we had uh, we had a lot of success where we didn't even realize we were going to get it. Peter, I have two questions for you. Well, I have Go more, ahead. but two at least that are right on my mind right now. Number one, do you have dates set up yet for your condo circuit for let's say this coming fall or winter or whatever? Yes, we, we start on November first uh, at a place called Century Village in Deerfield Beach, and we have others that we're going to post, but right now. That's the only one okay. uh, we have posted. Here. All right, next question. You've been around a lot. You've toured a lot. You've been on Where the stage with a lot of people, other people. Tell me, are there any salacious or interesting <laughs> stories that you can or would like to share with us and our listeners? Well, you know, for two years before I became famous myself, I was the opening act for Don Rickles. And I could tell you that... Uh, all the stories you hear about uh, how uh, rough he is on stage and how mild he is off stage are really true because he's the nicest guy in the world on stage, off stage. I mean, off stage. On stage, he's, uh, he appears to be uh, a killer. A, a he appears to be what's called nasty. Uh, anyway, hold your thoughts. He was just, he was just the fastest uh, <laughs> thinker I've ever seen. Okay. Yeah, don't go away, Peter. Peter we, we have hear this, the music. Uh, what would you call it? An annoying commercial break. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're listening to The View from Over Here, heard on crntalk.com. And you can hear us, www.viewfromoverhere.com, all the back shows. And we'll be back in a little while with Peter Lemongello.
Someday there'll be a cure. Someday we won't lose the people we love. But when is someday? Someday is today. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, hundreds of thousands diagnosed with blood cancer are today living a normal life. We're making cures happen. Join us. Call 888-HELP-LLS. Go to LLS.org. Help us reach today sooner. Hi, this is Fred Dreyer telling you to sign up for FanDuel and win cash this weekend. Chris from Detroit has won over $656,000 playing fantasy sports at FanDuel.com. FanDuel.com is the leader in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. Entry fees start at just $1. No season-long commitment, no upfront fees. Play each week or whenever you want. FanDuel is paying out more than $10 million every single week this NFL season. But you have to play to win, so sign up today. Go to FanDuel.com and click on the microphone in the upper right-hand corner. Use my code DRYER and sign up now. And as a new user special, FanDuel will match your first deposit dollar up to 200 bucks. That's up to $200 free. Offer is only good for the first 50 people that use my code DRYER. FanDuel.com, where every week is a new season. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com, code word DRYER. Did you know that with a bachelor's degree, on average, you can make almost twice as much over a lifetime than a person with just a high school diploma? Yes! According to the U.S. Census Bureau, you can make almost twice as much. Going back to college is now easier than ever. There are select online colleges that provide laptops to their students. In fact, there are thousands of college programs on your laptop. You can go to college anywhere and everywhere right from a laptop. Call My College Laptop and you can find hundreds of programs from accredited colleges and universities nationwide. Start a new career in law enforcement, business, information technology, healthcare, and hundreds of others. Call My College Laptop to find an online college that will provide you with a laptop. In no time at all, you could double your earning potential. Double your earning potential. Call now, 1-800-731-4185. That's 800-731-4185.